in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. <coughs> Fighter Squadron 41, commonly called the Red Rippers. And uh, so they told us to get lost and get to Norfolk. And uh, I think most of us went by train. Got up to Norfolk and checked in with the people there and they assigned us to the carrier qualification unit because we had not ever had not landed on a carrier before this. <coughs> we had a few flights on the field uh, where we would s simulate a flight deck on the field and we would would make our approaches with a landing signal officer. And uh, we had maybe three or four flights of those <coughs> again in the SNJ. So um, we uh, did, oh, maybe three or four practice flights on the field uh, with an LSO. And then we flew out to uh, the ship, which was a Jeep carrier. It was a, a, a USS Charger. It was a fairly new, new ship. They, they, they had just started building uh, building those a short time before and uh, <coughs> made uh, made eight landings on the charger and we were qualified and at that point they said okay you guys are eligible for 15 days leave and all right so I decided I was going to go home to California and uh, marry up with that girl that I'd given a, an engagement ring to about a year before, just before I left. And this was the you know, last couple of days of November by then, 42. So I rode the train all the way to California. We decided to get married. I think we'd already decided that, but we uh, went down and got a marriage, or to get a marriage license, and, and uh, the person issuing it said, well, you know, you have to wait three days after issuance of this marriage license uh, before you can get married. That's new law in California. And we discussed that and decided we didn't want to wait that long because I, I was running out of leave every day. And uh, although they did, the guy did tell us that there is one way around that. He said, we understand that down in Marin County, they're not paying attention to this law. And uh, you can go down there and get married the same day if you want to. And however, uh, later on, the marriage could be contested. It might, might, and it might be ruled uh, illegal. And uh, my would-be wife says, "I do not want to have a marriage that can be contested." So we left there without a marriage license. And decided to go to Reno, which was only two hours away, and uh, get married up there, which we did. Came back to our home, and my parents lived in the town of Loomis near Sacramento, and her parents lived in Auburn, which is 10 miles further. <coughs> and we 
borrowed my mother's car and drove to San Francisco and the Bay Area and, uh, just to visit different relatives and, and uh, have a brief honeymoon. We uh, went back home after about three or four days. I was getting time. I was running out of out of leave. I got. I think I had about five days left before I had to be in Norfolk. So I went down to McClellan Air Force Base, Sacramento, and <coughs> went to see the commanding officer of the base and introduced myself and told him I needed to get to Norfolk and asked him if he had any airplanes that were going that direction. <coughs> and he said, yes. He said, We've, I've got a C-47 that's leaving tonight. It's going to Dayton. If you want to go to Dayton, I said, well, that's closer to Norfolk than Sacramento. So uh, I packed up all my gear and got on that airplane and flew to Dayton. We got in there, it was all, it was dark. And uh, I went into operations. I said, you got anything going to the East Coast. And the guy said, yeah, he says, that, see that T-6 out there turning up? He says, that guy, the major, he's going to go to Bowling Field in Washington, D.C. He says, if you want to ride on it, get your gear and get out there and go. I said, that's great. And I jumped in and threw my stuff in the baggage compartment and off we went. I almost froze to death in the back seat of that thing. It was then it was a, about the seventh of December, and uh, oh maybe it may be the eighth. I've gotten married on the fifth, so it was eighth or ninth. I got got into a bowling field. My, I couldn't feel my feet; they were so cold, but. I managed to get out of there and I caught a train to Norfolk and went in and checked into my first squadron. And I was ready to become a fighter pilot. I got, I got the nickname Diz there. I was taken in and introduced to the squadron commander. And he, along with the, in the interview, he asked me, do you have a nickname? And I said, well, yeah. I said, the, the kids in high school, when I was playing baseball, they used to call me Dizzy because my first name is Dean. And uh, he said, that's good enough for me. Dizzy you are. So um, that got around in the squadron very fast. Everybody called me Dizzy. And I, I was assimilated into the squadron pretty, pretty well. Had a couple of familiarization flights in the new airplane, the, the F-4F Wildcat. And uh, then I was getting a, a given a, assigned to a flight going on an air-to-air -air gunnery flight. And, uh, with the executive officer of the squadron. And all the pilots had told me, old pilots told me that uh, <coughs> the executive officer, he was known as Spanky, because he was, he was shaped kind of like Spanky in the, in the comic uh, movies, in the R Gang Company. Uh, and his name was Spanky. And, Spanky is the best gunner in the Navy. And he, he outshoots everybody in our squadron by far. And, and he usually gets 12 or 13 percent on every gunnery flight. And uh, so he's got a, he'll, he'll show you how to, how to hit that target. So I went out on the target my first gunnery flight, came back. Spanky had shot 12%, just like as advertised, 
and I shot 18 percent, and I shouldn't have done that because Spanky resented not being number one. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, I kept up my gunnery scores, and I, I was in that squadron until 1945, and I was always the number one gunner in the squadron. But anyway, after oh, a couple of months of more training around the Norfolk area, we flew aboard the carrier Ranger and took off. Went up to went up to well the Boston area. It was a, the weather was really bad. It was uh, March, and uh, we were told to man the airplanes. We had planned a flight for us to go fly into fly into Boston, the <coughs> Naval Air Station Squantum area. <clears throat> the weather was really, really bad, and uh, we we got off after a little delay, which I won't go into. And it was snowing. Well, I would, had been assigned to the flight officer in the squadron, who was the number three. Three seniorly, seniorly, seniority wise, and I flew the f fourth plane in his flight. He was one, two, number three was a no a lieutenant junior grade who was about uh, he had about a year or a year and a half experience, and uh, I think our leader. He was out of the class of 38 at the Naval Academy, and he couldn't go to flight training until 1940. So he was only out of flight training uh, maybe a year and a half longer than I had been. And he was our leader. But we took off in the snow, got the squadron all together, and we headed in right on the deck. We hit land, and we had to climb to get over the sand dunes. We were so low, and started wandering around the area someplace, somewhere near Boston. Couldn't see anything, and I didn't know. I had no idea where we were. I had no maps or anything. I was just in there on my leader like this, and wherever he went, that's where I went. And uh, finally, we, we, our squadron commander, who was way up in the front, says, I'm going up through this thing, going on top. So he disappeared into this murk, and everybody went up except my leader and decided that he didn't want to get up in that stuff. So and we stayed on the deck, the four of us. And there was a little city right there. Well, I didn't know what it was. And I knew it was somewhere south of Boston. That's about all. <coughs> and we circled and circled. And the city had a lot of big smokestacks. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the name of it. Anyway, we were we were had to stay below the the bottoms of the crowds, and we had to dodge the smokestacks as we were, we were circling this place. Finally, our our leader.